When I think of pure classic 1980s childhood nostalgia fantasy movies, mm, the best kind, I think of some of the greats, the Willows, the Dark Crystals, the never ending stories. However, there is one movie that will always hold a special place in my heart, Labyrinth. Directed by Jim Henson, produced by George Lucas, with a musical composition by David Bowie, it is a coming of age story starring Jennifer Connelly as the lead character Sarah, who is also my childhood crush just because of this movie. Sarah is dealing with your typical teenager problems, like being stuck out in the rain while role playing, hating your stepmother, and growing a set of boobs. Sarah's main problem is she's resentful of her baby brother Toby, so much that she hopes he will just disappear and wishes the Goblin King from her play would take him away. Her dream becomes an unfortunate reality though when the goblins actually kidnap the boy. As a result, Sarah finds herself regretting the wish. After a face to face with the goblin king played by David fucking Bowie himself, she sets out on a journey to recover her baby brother. The catch being that she only has 13 hours to somehow reach the center of the labyrinth where the wicked goblin king has imprisoned Toby. Labyrinth is one of my top favorite movies of all time. In fact, I would say top five. It brings me back to an age where movies weren't CGI, had practical effects, puppets, amazing music, and just a perfect charm that the 80s could only bring. While the film's success was moderate in the United States, it grew a rather large following in Japan. So much in fact that a game for the Famicom was developed based on the movie. I never knew there was a game about this movie. If I would have known as a kid, I probably would have shat myself. I've only recently discovered this game and found out that it was all in Japanese. However, I managed to secure myself a translated reproduction card. Without any further ado, let's begin. Oh my god, you gotta love this title screen. Look at that. Goosebumps, guys. Goosebumps right here. This title screen is everything that my five-year-old self could have wanted from this damn movie. So many memories. You immediately see a cutscene where Jareth informs Sarah that you need to save your baby brother in 13 hours. Ah, so now we see the Goblin King, just like in the movie. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. what the hell is up with his eyes? This is the stuff nightmares are made of. Seriously, fucking that is some Medusa bullshit right there. From this point of the game, the timer begins. As I mentioned, you only have 13 hours, which is really just 13 minutes of game time to find your baby brother. If you lose time, you lose the game. And this clock is faster than a hooker on prom night. Each area of the labyrinth has power-ups that you can use to increase your time. There's lipstick, which gives you one hour, the clock gives you three extra hours, and the labyrinth book gives you five hours. One observation I have about the game right away is that the path of the movie is followed pretty closely. From the opening cutscene with Jareth, to having to find the gate to enter the labyrinth, and then going down the long highway where Sarah performs her best aha impression, you find the worm who is from one of my most favorite scenes in the movie. Hello. Did you say hello? No, I said hello, but that's close enough. From here you find yourself in a maze of hedges. Think of this as a central hub area for the game. The wise man in the center tells you what to do and which other mazes you're able to visit. But in order to open new areas, you have to find the key in each section. And it's not as quite easy as it looks, my broskies. In order to properly beat the game, you need to find 12 key pieces total and a magic stone in order to enter Jarrett's tower, the final level of the game. When you finally enter the first maze, you'll see this game plays a lot like Gauntlet. When Sarah is hurt by the attack of an enemy, minutes are taken off the clock, which, when expired, ends gameplay. And this can happen rather quickly because every time you are hit, you freeze in place, and this can leave you open to being gangbanged by every single enemy in the area. Seriously, look at this shit! I cannot move at all! If it's game over, you have to immediately start over from square one. Yes, the developers of this game intended Labyrinth to be completed within one sitting. Most of the time, I just run past all the enemies because they can pulverize you pretty bad. Yeah. 
why in the hell are most of these Famicom games so freaking hard? Uh, do they take, like, video game steroids in Japan? That's what I want to know. But Sarah's not defenseless. She's able to throw stones and use them to kill enemies from her path. I'm being chased by fairies! Holy shit! I just usually end up running away from all the enemies most of the time because it's not worth risking the time loss. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but they can fuck up goblins in the labyrinth. Bitch. Among the items that increase your time in the mazes, the worm is also hidden on each stage to sell you survival items. However, there's one item the worm cannot sell you, which is hearts. These hearts are found throughout the levels and are used to assign to either Hoggle, Ludo, or Sir Didymus. When enough hearts are given to one of these characters, they will accompany your character. This concept seems cool, however, it's not utilized properly in this game. I've had trouble controlling any of them. Hoggle doesn't seem to want to fight enemies, Ludo is too slow, and Sir Didymus is way too fast. Look at him! Not to mention, they always get stuck. Why do video game sidekicks suck? They always get stuck, they always fall victim to the same things, just like in X-Men on the NES. They're fucking worthless, they're not even worth using. Most of the time, I just avoid them. Once you get the key, and if one of the exits or more are unoccupied in the hedge area, you gain access to a new maze. However, if you fail to collect the coin in the maze, it will still occupy space until you collect it. When you collect three of these coins, it allows you to trade them to the wise man to power up your attack and defense. The levels in this game are pretty bland and consist of not really impressive details, but they're covered with enemies and pitfalls. If you fall into a pit, you fall into an oubliette, which is usually the most dangerous parts of the mazes. Some of these levels are pretty much designed to annoy the shit out of you. There are times when going down a certain path warps you to another part of the map and you won't even realize it. It is stuff like this that makes Labyrinth one of the hardest games I've ever played. And I've played with a lot of hard stuff in my life. Wait, that don't sound right. One stage that brought my piss to a boil was the force of laughter. The controls are backwards. Up is down, left is right, right... God damn it! Which way am I fucking going? Up is left, right is down, down is left, what the fuck am I doing? This stage is nearly fucking impossible. But you gotta love that 8-bit rendition of Chili Down. That's like one of the scariest parts of the movie. However, it's perhaps the most catchiest song of the whole fucking movie. From here, each stage just becomes more and more disoriented. But some stages are awesome renditions of scenes from the movie, such as the Bog of Eternal Stench. The of eternal stands. And they even have a stage that represents the ball scene from the movie. This one is just a random game of what stairs do I take to exit the fucking level. And good luck with that because Jareth is super present in the stage and will fuck your world up. If Jareth appears on screen, you better run as fast as you can because he's gonna come after you like a guy fresh out of jail. The clock will definitely run down. Look how fast this shit is going. After a few more of the same wash, rinse, repeat type of levels, you make your way to the Goblin City and if you have enough keys you get to enter Jareth's castle, which is perhaps the most cryptic final level in history. Good luck finding your way through without a strategy guide. I had to game facts this shit. Old school. Game facts, bitch. Not to mention, this pink dinosaur looking thing will fuck you up. Harder than David Bowie's menacing penis. If you manage to somehow find Jared Stone, you add it to your 12 key pieces and you're now able to re-enter the castle for a second time to find your brother Toby. I seriously had to follow a strategy guide just to make it through this castle. This last final part of finding Toby is damn near nearly impossible. You gotta be Houdini to figure out this shit. This stage has the toughest enemies ever and is just extremely easy to get lost in. When you finally find your baby brother, the game is finished. And you get to enjoy yourself a very short but hard-earned ending. The journey was long and difficult, but your boy 8-bit freaking Eric made it and saved the day. And well guys, there you have it, Labyrinth on the Famicom. Honestly, probably one of the hardest games I've ever played in my life. It was a wonder that I was able to play through this, but it took a lot of patience. And yeah, I couldn't imagine playing this game as a kid. I would probably throw my controller through the TV. Sadly, Labyrinth as a movie didn't become successful until years after when it gained a cult following. However, 
this is probably one of the best unknown Famicom games of all time. It's definitely worth a look. It's not too expensive, and if you can find yourself a translated reproduction cart, it's well worth the try. And with that said, I think it's time to close out this video with a song. Hit it, Mario. You remind me of the babe. Babe. Babe with the power. power. Power of voodoo. You do. You do. Right. Remind me of the babe. <laughs> Quiet! A goblin babe. <laughs> well. Baby said.